Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to fetch data from an API in Flutter. So if you find this to be useful, consider subscribing and like the video as well. So basically, I'll be using the joke API where you get a random joke and also the punchline towards it. So with that said, let's jump right in. So to ensure everyone is on the same page, in my main dot I created a home page and just imported it. So let's start by creating a function. So the return type of the function is going to be future, which is going to be of type map of string and dynamic. And this declares the return type of the function, which is a future object that will eventually resolve to a map of objects with string keys and dynamic values. And the function name is going to be fetch random joke. And since it's a future, it's going to be an asynchronous function. So we'll be using HTTP package, so you need to import that. You actually need to have that installed, added to your password.yml file. I also installed a flip card. We'll be using it. So once you have that installed within the function, I'll create a response variable in here. And I need to await and call upon the HTTP and get method. So this line basically send HTTP get request to the specified URL and wait for the response to come back before continuing the execution. So I'll just grab my URL in here and paste it. So basically, the reason for passing the URL is to make sure that it is in a valid format before it is being used by HTTP package. So first of all, let's check the response status. So if the response status code is equal to 200, meaning everything went OK, we actually transform the response body into a JSON format. And the way we do that, I'll create a variable in here and we need to add and we need to transform the body of the response into a JSON format. And the way we do that is JSON the code. Then we pass in our response, response.body. And can actually return the data, right? So let's check for the exception. We can actually throw an exception in here with a message of fill to generate a random joke, something like that. So. So that's basically how to fetch a data from an API. So this is the function that we are going to call. So we are, we are now returning the scaffold. So within the scaffold, let's start with an app bar. So the title of the app bar is going to be random joke. There we go. You can also center the title as well. So when saving the changes, you can actually see it over there. So below the app bar, you can have access to the body, the body property. So we will we'll be returning the future builder. That's basically a rigid. That takes in the future and also the builder. So the future is going to listen to the function that gets called. So we provide it the fetch random joke function to it. It also takes in the builder. The builder is basically a function that takes in the context and also the snapshot. The snapshot is what holds the data. So within the builder, we can check the state of the snapshot. First of all, if we, let's check the connection state. So if the snapshot the connection state is equal to connection state of waiting, we can actually return a circular progress indicator indicating that something is loading you can also check for the data of of the snapshot so if snapshot dot has data that's when we get access to our data so if snapshot dot has data i'll create a variable in here and i'll assign the snapshot dot data to the job variable so i need to extract the setup and also the punchline from the job. So I'll create a variable known as the setup and I'll assess the job and I'll set the setup value there. I'll be doing same for the punchline. So that's what the API just bring the joke and the setup. So I'll change that to punchline. There we go. So within that if statement, we can actually return a column in here.
So within the column, we're testing the children. And the first child of this column is going to be the flip card. So it's a package you need to add to your dependency. So you need to import the flip card as well. So when you hover on the flip card, you can see it requires the front and also the back. So I'll start with a test. So with the front, I'll start with a test of data. And also, also I'll also provide a back value to get rid of the errors and also give it some test widgets of data. So I'll just save the changes. You can see the loading indicator. And finally, we have access to the data. So I'll just change this to the setup and also change um, the next one to the punchline. So when you flip the card, you actually see the punchline. That's where, what I'm actually trying to do. So you can see the loading state. And finally, we have our data back. So when you click on it, it turns to the punchline. So I will start a little bit. So at the at the front, I will just wrap the test widget within the column widget, so I can place another test within it, and that is going to indicate the type. So I'll give it a test of joke, and also provide some size balls just to space out between the title and also the actual data we are getting. So I'll give it a size box, give it a height of 15 and just saving the changes. Boom, as you can see it over there, you can actually provide more styling to it. So I'll just wrap the column within, within a card widget. And also wrap the column within the pattern, give it some part, enough pattern around it. You can see it over there. Let's actually set the main axis alignment of the column to main axis alignment dot center so we can actually have it centered. Saving the changes as you can see it over there. So I can just copy the card and just replace with the back. So when it's flipped, let's actually change what we'll be seeing when it's flipped. So we need to change the test to the punchline towards that joke and also the, this test also out the punchline and saving the changes you can see it over there you can actually just wrap the circular progress indicator within the center widget so you can have it centered and also the column within the center widget saving the changes you can see it over there there you go see when I click on the card it turns So let's actually give some additional information to the test by styling it. So it is in the text cell. So we just specify a font size to be here and then give it a font size of maybe 20. We'll be doing the same for the back card as well. Also provide the font size. So we actually need a button that will call a function to generate a new job. So below the flip card is going to be an elevated button that takes in the unpress and also the child. So within the unpress, that's where they are going to call a function a new job. So it takes in the unpress and also the um the child. We are going to specify a test widget to be the child. There we go, as you can see it over there. So let's actually provide the spacing between the button and also the flip card. So I'll give it a size box and give it some height to it. So I'll give it a height to the size box. And that's going to take in a height of 10 and save any changes. There we go. I also start my button a little bit. So with the style, I'll give it ele elevated dot star from so that we can actually provide a shape value to the elevated button so elevate elevated button dot star from and this takes in the shape and I'm going to specify a stadium border shape in here that will give it a rounded circular button so within on press of this function we're actually going to set the state and just call a function 
that's basically it so you need to set a state and just call a fetch random joke function just like that so that's basically it if you actually found this to be useful and interesting consider subscribing like and share the video as well see you in our next tutorial until then stay tuned